and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles show in West Hollywood. I'm here with Lily Jackson with her movie, The Drop-In. Let's take a look at a clip. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for being here. No problem. And congratulations on your film. Thank I you. really, really enjoyed it, but there are some of the audience members that haven't seen it. Uh -huh. So tell us a brief synopsis of your film. So the drop-in's about an appointment mm -hmm. at a quiet hair salon in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, that becomes a confrontation between the stylist and the drop-in client, mm -hmm. which then escalates into a full-blown um, kung fu showdown. I mean, why would you not want to see that with a synopsis like that? Like I was, I was fascinated. Well, in my notes when I was come to speak to you, I don't know. I'm person that never curses at all, but I did put it's something awesome nah. explanation mark. <laughs> um, it was brilliant. Thank Such you. Such a great story, and I love that you took like something like a hair salon, mm -hmm. and then behind closed doors there's this amazing kung fu situation going <laughs> on, which you just don't expect. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, you wrote and directed this. Where did the inspiration come from in writing this story? Well. A couple of things. Um, first of all, it was a proof of concept for a feature that I had written quite mm -hmm. a while ago, uh, which I was looking to make, but I couldn't get the confidence of any producers because I had never directed anything martial arts related. So, um, wow, it's your first, mo wow, it's amazing. Yeah, so there was this grant called the Harold Greenberg Fund in yeah. uh, Canada, which I applied for and subsequently won. Um, so that allowed me to do this proof of concept, but then it, it just turned into a completely different thing and became its, its own short in itself and yeah. kind of quite different from the original project. Um, so, uh, so that's really the genesis of it. I yeah. mean, as I was writing it, there was, there was other things that inspired me, like it has themes of immigration yeah. in it and, um, I was looking at my own family history. Yeah. You know, my my mother came from apartheid era South Africa yeah. to Canada, um, and even though Canada is a very safe country, a safe space, I think um, she still carried a lot of inner conflict about severing herself from her homeland. Yeah. So I wanted to use genre filmmaking to kind of explore those kind of uh, vulnerabilities with yeah. immigration. And um, yeah, and just do that in a way that's that's not usually done. Uh, yeah, like totally not. And that was <laughs> I, it's a, what a wonderful way to, to explore as well. And what you had the audience in absolute shock because you had two fantastic um, actresses who were brilliant, mm -hmm. um, and then everyone was just thinking that they were these highly skilled, you know, multi award winning martial artists. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time they'd done it, and yet they yeah. were brilliant. How was the casting process for you and what, what was their reaction to being involved in a film that in, was this exciting and, and, and doing martial arts? Must have been mm. fun for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was a learning curve for all of us. Yeah. Um, I had worked with Olunike, who plays Grace, who's mm. the, the agent who comes to the salon, the, the drop-in client, basically. Yeah, she's brilliant. So I had already worked with her before on a previous short and, um, and I knew that she had um she was very adaptable so mm. i could basically throw her in any situation mm. and and she could um she could adapt to that muna who plays joelle the mm. hairstylist um was actually uh had a had a leading role on a popular canadian victorian series called murdoch mysteries oh, so wow. this was a very far departure Different from, piece for her, yeah. from <laughs> what she's used to but she was just like she was she was gung ho. I, I pitched her the story, and um, I was like, "Look, it's it's going to be really tough. I, I'm going to have to train you guys from zero to a hundred. Are you in?" And um, they were both in. Um, but I I really couldn't have done it without um, my stunt team. Yeah. So I I was very fortunate to work with a stunt coordinator called Paul Rapofsky. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've seen Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Okay, so he did that. Oh, and, um, tiny, that amazing, yeah. huge film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was all, he was very active in like the Hong Kong film scene in the 80s. So yeah. he was like, he's like an OG with this stuff. So wow. he paired me with some amazing men. Um, 
Jason Gosby, Eric Daniels, and Dennis LaFond. Mm -hmm. And so that was my core team of people. And so just every weekend and multiple times a week, we'd work with Olunike and Luna, just training them in um, martial arts basics. Mm. And then just like escalating it and escalating it and escalating it until it came time to shoot. Cause, wow. Um, yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> it must <laughs> to be learn. nice as a performer, like to be like given a role like that as well, where you yeah. literally get to kick backside, basically. You know, it must be fun. Yeah, I mean, things are definitely changing now. But um, at the time when I when I cast them, which was actually towards the end of 2016, mm. you know, Black Panther hadn't come out. Mm. There weren't very many black women on screen yeah. given these um, these kinds of roles, mm. and um, and Olenike's a, a bit older um, so you know people are very quick to, to throw action roles at people in their 20s less yeah. so people in their late 30s or 40s um, but I, I knew that she could do it so I was like let's just see how it goes <laughs> no but that's good but also yeah. in, in respect to that as well like there is such you know it's great to be able to see you know many people from all over the world you know um, being showcased in the moving image and we are in a great change in time right now mm -hmm. and it's it was it was wonderful um to see you know and and uh you know you are the future of the industry so it's great that we are you know get to celebrate you and you're showing these amazing talented people and then emerging their talent into a whole new entity in martial arts which yeah. i think is a great <laughs> extension of that person as a performer as well it's a great opportunity you gave them what was it like directing a piece like that Mm. Well, I mean, the piece is, is 13 minutes, yeah. so the bulk of it is a, the lead up to the fight. Yeah. So just building that tension and, and just, yeah, it was basic drama directing, which yeah. was fine um, and requires a lot of sensitivity and, you know, understanding both actors' process. Action directing became very it was a very different thing. Mm. Um, you basically, um, or the advice I was given by Paul, uh, you kind of have to take on like a football coach persona and mm. I had to be really hard on them and basically yell at them for 13 hours oh, um, wow. on every set day we had. It was a two day shoot for the action sequences yeah. and, and one day for the drama. But yeah, you're just standing there like, one, two, three, action! <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like, you have to keep their energy levels up yeah. because if they sink, you see it in the performance. Yeah. Um, so you really have to bring as much energy in your directing as they're delivering in yeah. their, their performance. And because we weren't really using stunt people, yeah. um, they, were, they were doing it all themselves. So the most challenging thing was, was making sure that their energy levels uh, we're behind each punch and each, each kick. Punch, yeah, because you got to yeah. keep their, you got to keep their um, energy levels high, and you yeah. got to keep it the momentum going all the time, haven't you? Yeah, that's a big challenge. You got to be football coach, stroke director. Um, you know, yeah. no, brilliant. What was the biggest challenge for you? Um, I think uh, it, it was probably, well, every filmmaker says this, but it's time. Mm. So um, just uh, making your day with the fight sequences we ended up having to condense the choreography on the day because um, it, it was initially choreographed and blocked in, in four sequences. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to figure out a way to just condense it to make sure we, we got all of our coverage because it was, it was taking a little bit too long. Yeah. And, um, but at that point, the actresses were, they, they just knew the choreography so well that they were able to do it. It was amazing. Um, and also having our stunt team there to, to guide that through, yeah. um, help that happen. But that was a huge, um, that was, that was, a, that was something that was quite troubling. Yeah, I'm sure. And also, um, we had one phenomenal stunt woman for, for two things, um, the table smash and, um, a really hard, uh, landing. Yeah. Um, otherwise, the the actresses did all the fighting. But wow. Dejan, it was it was her first time doing uh, stunt work when she did the table smash. Wow. And we had just one table rigged for the smash. Oh, so no pressure. Yeah. She had to get it 
and yeah, everything just had to work out perfectly. Otherwise, that critical point in the fight just wouldn't work. So wow. we're like the whole crew was just like waiting oh, with bra- bated breath um, for oh. for her to do the stunt. And bless her heart, she she just nailed it, and oh. everybody was cheering. <laughs> it was it's fantastic. Amazing. But that was that was a bit um, that was that was a bit close. Yeah. Well, from a writing perspective, like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoy watching it. I have to admit, you shocked me. I thought she's going there for a great haircut. I thought she'd come out, be pretty happy, and off she goes. But you just completely turned things upside down. And it was great because the audience almost had the same response. Like, what? Like, what's going on? Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> that must feel great for you as a writer to sort of see that reaction by something you've written and just kind of see people that, you know, flipping themselves and like, what is going on here? This is insane. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to reveal the very end spoilers. Yeah, you have to but watch it. I kind of, you know, I, I, I mapped it out like that. Mm. I, I wanted people to really sit in the drama as, as long as they could before yeah. all hell broke loose. Yeah, well, it worked. That's all I'm saying. It definitely worked. Yeah, and so much of that, you know, surrounding yourself with the best people yeah. like my director of photography Jackson Powell yeah, like he the way he set up or helped me set up the shot for that transition from her sitting in the chair to launching into the fight mm. like that wasn't that wasn't in anything that I storyboarded like we wow. came up with it on the fly but it just worked so well and, and, and got everybody, you know, like, well, ah, that's happening now, you know? But, uh, no, but so. I think the one, the one really great thing, well, many great things you've done, but the one great thing I think is so great is independent filmmaker creating this, you know, pushing yourself with new entities of genres. I think that's always so wonderful when you're like, I haven't done this and I'm going to give this a go. But then actually bringing an experienced team around yeah. you to support you that can help you with this. And then obviously it clearly works because it, it looks beautiful, it's brilliant. And I think that's a great credit and a good reminder as a filmmaker that, you know, listen, these stunts don't happen by themselves. Oh, like completely. you need to have a great team and, and trust in those kind of, yeah. in an action film. It's not exactly, you know, a walk in the park either. No, um, it's kind of like doing geometry while directing. It's yeah. Because you, you have to think of how the coverage is going to edit. And yeah. a lot of it's very counterintuitive. Mm. So not only do you have to focus on the performance, but the, it's it's very technical very too. Very technical too, yeah. yeah. So just having those experienced people with mm. you is, you know, it brings so much more value to what the budget actually is. Uh, yeah. like I, I wouldn't even know how to quantify it. No, it's, you know? it's, it's I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's a production value. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's huge. Um, now, currently you're playing tug of war because both Canada adores you and, and both Ella and you're here in Los Angeles for a little while as well mm-hmm. and you've got stuff going on here as well which is great so mm-hmm. obviously both countries just want to <laughs> you know want your talent which is brilliant um what's it what was it like to experience as a new filmmakers LA and the industry mixes and round tables how was that how was that adventure for you oh it was really wonderful because I honestly had uh, no idea what to expect with this mm. with this festival um when I came to the mixer on Friday, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Get to learn about shooting in LA, uh, like just s- some kind of basic production stuff, uh, working with SAG. And then you told me, oh yeah, and like 700 people are coming tomorrow. And I was like, what? Like I've been to so many festivals, which are, are very little, you, you know? And, and so uh, I was like, okay, this is actually a big thing and uh, and then all of the people that came to the mixer yesterday and and the festival it was it was it was really great yeah. um, being able to to meet so many different mm. filmmakers and seasoned industry people yeah you know uh, and yeah and peers in the program so yeah. that was really fantastic oh good I'm glad you had a good time and, and what is next for you um, well right now my priority is uh, working on the feature version of this. Good. Um, yes. So I want to see it. I'm, I'm, you know, in the end stages of the script. Excellent. And, um, yeah, just trying to push that forward. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I just got off of a few television shows, television shows that I was writing for, and um, might go back to those. We'll see. Excellent. Well, yeah. the future is definitely bright, and uh, thank you for bringing your talent to us. Thank and, you and we, for we loved me. your film. We're looking forward to following many more of your projects as well. And, thank you. And best wishes for the future and other projects as well. Thanks.